Chapter 8 of Pee Wee Harris on the Trail. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Catherine Phipps. Pee Wee Harris on the Trail by Percy Keyes Fitzhugh. A Discovery. The ominous sound of doors rolling and of clanking staples and padlocks told Pee Wee all too conclusively that he was a prisoner and he was seized with panic terror at the thought of being locked in a dungeon where he could hardly see his hand before his face. As to where he was, he had no guess more than that he was miles and miles from home. But along with his fright came a feeling of relief that he was no longer in company of those two scoundrels who were unwittingly responsible for his predicament. They would probably not return before morning, and he would have at least a little breathing spell in which to consider what he should do if indeed he could do anything. The departure of his captors gave him courage and some measure of hope. Freedom he did not hope for, but a brief respite from peril was his. Time, time, what the doomed crave and pray for, that at least was his. He had presence of mind enough to refrain from making any sound, for the thieves might still be in the neighbourhood for all he knew. The last he had heard of them, they had been talking of handling her, and giving her a shove, and he did not want them to come back and handle him. So he sat on the rear seat of the big hunker-junk car, ready to withdraw beneath the robe at the first sound of approaching footsteps. If he had been free to make a companionable noise, to whistle or to hum, or to listen to the friendly sound of his own movements, he would have felt less frightened. But the need of absolute silence in that dark prison agitated him and in the ghostly stillness every creak made the place seem haunted. If he could only have seen where he was, he knew now something of the insane terrors of dark and solitary confinement. So strongly did this terror hold him, that for a minute or two he dared not stir upon the seat, for fear of causing the least sound which the darkness and strangeness of the place might conjure into spectral voices. There is but one way to dispel these horrors, and that is by throwing them off with quick movement and practical resolve. He jumped down out of the car, and groping his way through the darkness, stumbled against a wall. Moving his hand along this, he found it to be of rough boards. Indeed, he had a more conclusive proof of this by the fact that a large splinter of the dried wood pierced his finger, paining acutely. He pulled it out and sucked the bleeding cut, then wound his handkerchief around it. One discovery, at least, he had made. The building, whatever it was, was old. The smell of the board sides informed him of that much, and there was no flooring. He now stood thinking, wondering what he should do next, and as he paused he heard a sound near him, a sound as of quick, low breathing. In the open, such a sound would not have been audible, but in the ghostly darkness of that strange prison, he could hear it clearly when he listened. Sometimes he could distinguish the momentary pauses between the breaths, and sometimes the faint sound seemed continuous. As he listened in silent, awful terror, the thumping of his heart seemed to interrupt the steady, low sound. It was not normal breathing, surely, but it was the sound of breathing. He was certain of that. He thought it was over near the car. End of chapter 8